Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless there is a coming world dictator known as the antichrist who is foretold of in the bible who in the near future will control a worldwide government a worldwide monetary system and a worldwide religion he will use surveillance technology to control the peoples of the world is he living now probably is the Antichrist already working behind the scenes to bring about his plan for world economic and political domination? It seems so. From all indications, the Antichrist satanic technology-based system is already being set in place. He will use technology to achieve and enforce his near total control of the world and its people, and they don't even see it coming. Revelation 13, 16 through 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. You've pledged to block a potential central bank yeah. digital currency. Is that about surveillance? It's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. Uh, one day you don't have any money in your account. It can be a very dangerous thing. Former President Trump is sounding the alarm on digital currency and other threats to American freedom. Monica, so this past week, my daughter flew to Bangkok um, with her husband, and they flew China Air. And when they were boarding, they said, those who paid with CBDC, Central Digital Bank Currency, get to board first. The kind of privileges you'd get if you were first class or if you had little children. Um, there is a push going on. I think that's coming here. Help our viewers understand why this push towards CBDC that we see from the Democrat Party, that we see from the World Economic Forum, and, and, and that Donald Trump is warning about is so dangerous. This is exceedingly dangerous because central bank digital currencies are only about power and control for any government that is implementing them, like the Chinese government, because it is a critical cornerstone to moving any society to a social credit score yes. kind of, of system. So exactly what you're describing with your daughter is what the left and transnational organizations like the World Economic Forum want here. A central bank digital currency is essentially replacing hard assets like cash and cash-based assets with a digital currency that would be centralized in, say, the Federal Reserve. So ultimately, they want to get rid of all banks of all sizes, from J.P. Morgan Chase to your local community bank, and replace it with the Federal Reserve. Why? Because all of your assets will no longer be a tangible asset in your wallet, like a $10 bill. Instead, your assets will be a line of software and therefore open to be taxed, drained, garnished, or entirely wiped out by the government or any controlling authority. So again, your privacy will be completely eliminated along with your financial freedom. Yeah, I mean, it's so scary. And Monica, we this isn't like some fantasy. This has is already happening in China. And as, I, as you mentioned, the WEF and other organizations are pushing us toward this. Give um, our, our viewers an example of how their freedom could be curtailed through this now not uh, this cashless society. So if you do what, they can do what? Again, this is about power and control only. And if the government has control over your assets, they have control over you. Right. And it gets back to the social credit score system. So let's say a government, the U.S. government, decides that you have overstepped your carbon emissions mm. on any given month. Well, if we have a fully digitized financial system, then the government then has the right or will have the right to go into your savings account, your bank account and either tax you or uh, prevent you from buying gas for the rest of the month for your car or airline tickets to fly anywhere in the country or in the world or lock you out of your account 
completely. Again, this is a totalitarian system, and I must say that the Biden administration, the Treasury Department, they have had a pilot program, Rachel, studying this since January of 2021 when they came into office. Exactly. Other Western governments are doing the same thing. And if we look around the world, they want to control you. Just look at what's happening. Food, energy, currency. If they've got you on those, they've basically got you in a digital prison. Um, they've got control over your life, and you will become dependent on them and their new Chinese-style social credit score system. Monica, you have been sounding the alarm on this for a long time. Thank you for the information. We really want our viewers to understand what our overlords um, uh, want or what they have in store for us. Make no mistake about it. Central bank digital currency is not a monetary system. It is a social credit system in which the governments of the world will tell you how you can spend your money. We can see that Christians will be persecuted using this system as they will try and force believers in Jesus Christ to adhere to their evil ways. When Christians say no, they will turn off your CBDC account. I hope you see how the mark of the beast comes into play as Christians will not be able to buy or sell. In the last days, the book of Daniel prophesied that knowledge would increase. Daniel 12.4 But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Knowledge is increasing rapidly in accordance with Daniel's prophecy. Events are happening faster than we can process them. Yet nothing startles or amazes us much anymore. And we are seeing an unsaved world rushing headlong into accepting the mark of the beast, and they don't even know it. In our time, the time of the end, we are witnessing the technology that will bring about the end of days, climaxing in the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There are many prophecies in Daniel's time that could not come to fulfillment because the technology had not yet been invented. That is why Daniel was told to shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. One of those prophecies is found in Revelation 13:15. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. What is the image of the beast? And how does the false prophet make an image that can be seen worldwide so that all people can worship it? The Bible does not provide many details concerning what this image of the beast is. We know this, however. The false prophet will have power to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image could speak. This breathing, speaking image of the beast will then demand worship. Anyone who refuses to worship the image of the beast will be killed. The method of execution for those who do not worship the image of the beast is beheading, as we read in Revelation 24. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus, and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads, or on their hands. It is likely that the image of the beast is the abomination that causes desolation in the rebuilt Jewish temple mentioned in Matthew 24, 15. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. The Apostle Paul further clarifies what the abomination of desolation is in 2 Thessalonians 2, 4. Who, the Antichrist, opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. What exactly is the makeup of the image of the beast, and how will people from all over the world worship it? The Bible does not say. The old speculation is that the image of the beast is a statue given the appearance of life. But with the rise of new technologies come new theories, including a fully immersive online realm that looks similar to the real world, but is computer generated. The era of spatial computing is here. The Apple Vision Pro is officially on the market. Your favorite apps live right in front of you. The company's first major new production since the Apple Watch nearly a decade ago lets users navigate with their eyes and pivot between 3D apps, videos, and screens for work. Mixed reality, and that's what Apple really is doing here, is where you are seeing your real world with digital objects in it. What might become a major boost to that virtual world The main rides are really around the emerging technologies. So is what Dr. John Wensveen calls a technology theme park for entrepreneurs at the Levan Center of Innovation. 
where on the campus of Nova Southeastern University in Broward County, Florida, you'll find this 3D volumetric capture studio. We literally capture you in a matter of seconds, your physical movement as well as your, your voice, and we translate that into an audio file. And now I've collected you and you are going to live forevermore. It's the kind of thing that you typically only find in Hollywood or at a government agency, but this is the first one in America open to the community. And you need all of these resources and able to create a 3D version of me yeah, or you. Exactly. So we capture all of this information, combine it into a single format. The end product, good morning, finds Sam me Brock reporting from live from all over the world. I'm Sam Brock reporting live from Times Square. I'm Sam Brock reporting live from Sanibel Island. I'm Sam Brock reporting live from Montreal, Canada. And the primary language here is French. I don't even speak French. Wait. Did I say I don't speak French? Salut, je suis Sam Brock. The system's AI language skills can help out there, just in time for the Summer Olympics in Paris. Le surf, break dance. Uh, C'est tout nouveau pour 2024. And now imagine this on your headset. Can I go into a volumetric capture studio, get my 3D representation, and then use it? on a device like an Apple Vision Pro. Yes, and once we've captured your 3D digital twin, there are different ways to superimpose that into the different types of technologies that are coming out. The possible applications leave a lot to the imagination. This is now what we have at our fingertips. Along with worshiping the image of the beast, the false prophet will require everyone in the world to receive a mark pledging allegiance to the Antichrist, as we read in Revelation 13, 16 through 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Whatever the image and the mark of the beast are, they will be the focal point of worship in the religion of the beast during the second half of the tribulation. Praising the image of the beast is how the deceived people of the world will worship the man of lawlessness who sets himself up as God in the coming rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. Those who do not worship the image of the beast will suffer the wrath of the Antichrist. But those who do worship the image of the beast will suffer the wrath of God, which is far worse, as we read in Revelation 14, 9 through 11. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. The first of God's bold judgments is aimed specifically at the worshippers of the image of the beast, as we read in Revelation 16, 1 and 2. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth. And a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. Those who refused to bow a knee to the Antichrist and the image of the beast may be persecuted on earth, but they will be rewarded in heaven as we read in Revelation 15, 1-4. Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them the wrath of God is complete. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire. And those who had the victory over the beast, over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having harps of God. They sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the saints. Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy, for all nations shall come and worship before you, for your judgments have been manifested. The image of the beast is front and center in Satan's kingdom on earth, but it will not last. The Bible specifies 42 months, or three and a half years, that the Antichrist will have worldwide influence, as we read in Revelation 13, 5-8. And he, the Antichrist, was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him, the Antichrist, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Notice it was given to him, and granted to him, to do these things. God is sovereign, 
and the Antichrist, who at this time is indwelt by Satan, has no power except what is given or granted by God. The image of the beast will be destroyed. The two beasts, the false prophet, and the Antichrist will be thrown into the lake of fire, as we read in Revelation 19, 19 and 20. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies, gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Satan will join the false prophet and the Antichrist, as we read in Revelation 20.10. The devil, who deceived them, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night, forever and ever. After this, the Lord Jesus will establish his unending kingdom of perfection, as we read in Luke 1.32 and 33. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. If we are seeing the technology for the image of the beast and the mark of the beast, how close are we getting to the Antichrist coming on the scene and forcing the world to worship him and take his mark? Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Psalm 917. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Major effort is underway in Chile, where wildfires are ravaging the country's central region. About 100 people have died so far, and officials say the death toll is only expected to climb. More than 1,000 homes have been destroyed. The fires are being fueled by hot, dry conditions, caused in part by the El Nino weather pattern. Tonight, the urgent battle to control these massive wildfires burning across Chile. Officials now saying the flames have killed at least 99 people as the death toll continues to rise. From the air and on the ground, more than 1,400 firefighters deployed and military personnel mobilized. Residents doing everything they can to douse the flames. The fires moving fast and intensifying as the smoke blankets the sky. Fueled by strong winds and higher than usual temperatures, the flames destroying more than 1,100 homes and burning at least 100,000 acres of land. And when the flames have been extinguished, the destruction is apocalyptic. The coastal resort city of Vina del Mar, home after home, burned out. Now to the deadly wildfires ripping through the coastline in Chile. Thousands of homes burned, hundreds of people are missing, and more than 100 confirmed dead. These fires broke out in central Chile on Friday and have been burning ever since, killing at least 112 people, and that number is expected to rise. The worst of it along the resort city of Viña del Mar. Entire neighborhoods devoured by flames and smoke, trapping people inside their homes. Officials saying around 200 people are missing, with three to 6,000 homes impacted. The nearly 100 fires come amid a summer heat wave in Chile, consecutive days of sweltering, dry temperatures above 90 degrees. The government has declared a curfew from 9 p.m. to 10 a.m. in the region. The government is trying to prevent looting, Thousands of people have been forced to evacuate in just minutes, but some, especially elderly people with limited mobility, could not escape in time. Look, there is nothing left of my house. Nothing as you can see. The neighbor across the street could not leave. He burned to death because he did not want to leave his house. Severe drought in Colombia is wreaking havoc on the country's water resources threatening agriculture, livestock, and people's food security. This reservoir usually supplies the south of Bogota, but its water levels are dangerously low, and ranges like Jairo Villamil fear it may run dry. Colombian farmer Victor Bula says his crops are suffering because of the drought. All his potatoes are cracked, and the dry soil is preventing his fertilizer from seeping through. He and other farmers like him have been forced to sell their animals because there's no grass. The soil is dry. 
It's a similar situation further north in Branca La Brija, where the river has completely dried up, leaving sandbanks exposed. The people of the town rely on fishing for their livelihoods, and residents there say food security is now an issue. Climate change has been blamed for driving the record drought that has hit all nine countries in the Amazon basin. Colombia's government also points to the El Nino weather phenomenon, which typically brings hotter and drier weather. Colombia is also facing severe wildfires, with the president declaring a natural disaster to free up funds to fight the blazes. The fires have destroyed dozens of acres of forest and moorland, with serious consequences for animals and plants. Psalm 107:33 and 34. He turns rivers into a wilderness, and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness, for the wickedness of those who dwell in it. The situation in parts of Catalonia is really very desperate. Some of those villages in, Pyre in the Pyrenees have already had water uh, being brought in in water tanks, and some of them have seen uh, the taps switched off from about 8 o'clock in the evening until 10 in the morning. Uh, that's all been because of the uh, three years, really, with very little rainfall. Now, these uh, measures, these emergency measures, are essentially extend some of the restrictions to the cities of Barcelona and Girona and to about 200 districts. 80% of Catalonians uh, will have uh, themselves forced to restrict their use of water. Uh, 200 litres per person per day is the limit, and people can be fined if they go above that. Switching your shower on for about a minute uses up 20 litres of water. Now, people won't be allowed uh, to use water for leisure purposes and for washing their cars. All those uh, ornamental fountains uh, will be switched off and uh, uh, swimming pools cannot be topped up or filled up unless they are municipal swimming pools and they uh, take additional measures, for instance, switching off uh, the showers. These are uh, desperate uh, measures, extraordinary measures, said uh, Per Aragonés, uh, the Catalan president. He said that they were essential and he called on people to show the same spirit that they showed in the pandemic in terms of saving water. Let's talk about that weather. It was nasty out west, very dangerous, warnings of life threatening conditions, torrential rain. Widespread flooding to California along with mudslides, damaging people's homes, cars as well. This roaring creek in Santa Barbara prompted police to go door to door, giving mandatory evacuation orders after four to five inches of rain fell in a matter of hours Sunday. It's extremely traumatic uh, to leave your house and not know what condition it's going to be when you get back. On the coast, powerful waves so strong they left this sailboat marooned on the beach. Rough conditions also shut down operations at the city's airport. Farther north, the San Jose Fire Department rescued a group of people as a rising river nearly swallowed this rapidly diminishing island. High winds gusting up to 55 miles per hour in Santa Rosa, downed trees that crashed onto homes, causing injuries and knocking out power to tens of thousands. In the Sierra Nevada, heavy snow blanketed the region with whiteout conditions. Back in Southern California, flooding washed out streets, forcing police to shut down roads in Ventura. The extreme flooding even has Los Angeles on high alert. This storm is a serious weather event. This has the potential to be a historic storm. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather, as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16.21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. 
In Revelation 16, 8, and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat. And they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Breaking news tonight near San Bernardino, where there has been a 4.2 magnitude earthquake. And our Inland Empire Bureau Chief Ron McMillan also felt it, and here's what he told us about the shaking at his house. I was in the kitchen, and it was a big jolt, followed by two or three seconds of just kind of the earth was a little trembly, and then another big jolt. And the kids were in the other room, and my daughter started crying, and then so we consoled them. And the questions you get from your kids are crazy. My two-year-old starts asking me if we're going to send the Paw Patrol out here to save the day. My four-year-old is asking if God made the earth shake because of his bad behavior. Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken because he was angry. Late last night, a 5.1 earthquake struck Oklahoma. Now marking the fourth strongest in the state's history. And when the bed quit shaking, some of the stuff on the wall was still moving. So I was like, mm, this is kind of crazy. Crazy is what many in green country are calling Friday night's 5.1 magnitude earthquake. I was in the Northridge earthquake in 1996. But I still have PTSD about it. I'm just, last night when it started to shake, I go, oh, like I literally couldn't breathe. Hayden Sides also says Friday's quake took her breath away. It was loud and intense. What did it sound like? It sounded like a freight train. Your house is shaking and you feel like you're next to a train, basically. Syphilis rates are soaring in America. And if you're thinking syphilis, that sounds like a problem from the 1940s, you'd be right. Syphilis is the sniper, the saboteur behind the lines. But it strikes not in the field, not in the camps, but in the towns. That is where syphilis must be fought. That was a public service announcement in 1942. And while rates are as high as they were back then, a new report from the CDC shows that syphilis is in fact increasing in nearly every demographic and every region of the US. Over 200,000 cases of syphilis were reported in 2022. That's up 80% from 2018, but that's not all. Nearly 4,000 cases of congenital syphilis was found amongst newborns in 2022. That's 10 times higher than it was the previous decade. So what's causing this disturbing trend? So we're seeing these rates of syphilis rise like they did many decades ago. And we think there's a few reasons behind this. Um, you know, one of is increasing uh, substance use. You know, things like alcohol and marijuana are linked to more risky sexual behavior. So that may be driving that increase in sexual behavior. Um, but otherwise, Aaron, we're also seeing decreased condom use. High school students over the last decade, 8% less likely to use condoms. Revelation 21.8 and 9.21, but the cowardly unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And they did not repent of their murders, or their sorceries, or their sexual immorality, or their thefts. In eastern Syria overnight, a drone attack on a base used by U.S. troops killed six people. Now, no American casualties were reported. It is the first significant response to U.S. airstrikes that hit militia bases in Syria and Iraq Friday. Over the weekend, the U.S. said it is also attacking Houthi rebels responsible for attacks in the Red Sea. The U.S. and the U.K. launched strikes on 36 targets in Yemen late on Saturday including Houthi missile systems and radars. The Houthi's slogan includes calls for death to America and death to Israel. The group vowed the strikes would not go unpunished. And just hours later, U.S. forces say they hit several Houthi cruise missiles, preparing to launch against ships in the Red Sea. The Houthis receive equipment and money from Iran, according to the U.S., it came just a day after the U.S. says it hit 85 targets here in Iraq and over the border in Syria. Ever since the Israel-Hamas conflict started, there have been fears it could expand, likely involving Iran's proxies. 
This morning, Secretary Blinken travelling to Saudi Arabia, the US battling on multiple fronts for a ceasefire and hostage release in Gaza and against Iran. We intend to take additional strikes uh, and additional action to continue to send a clear message. Waves of American strikes against Iranian-backed militia went all weekend, including on Friday night in Syria and Iraq, hitting munition stores and drone factories, a response to the killing of three U.S. service members, their bodies arriving home as B-1 bombers took off from the U.S. On Saturday, a second operation, multinational and separate, the U.S. said, launched from the USS Dwight Eisenhower, 36 strikes in Yemen against 13 Houthi targets, disrupting shipping in the Red Sea. Yesterday, angry Iraqi leaders held funerals, the number of dead in double figures. But despite the Pentagon saying it targeted Iran's revolutionary guard, the strikes, heavily signaled in advance, did not kill high-value Iranian operatives. Not so far. Have you ruled out strikes inside Iran? I'm not going to get into what we've ruled in and ruled out. And now, Iran releasing a highly produced video in English, warning the U.S. not to sink an Iranian ship, the Beshad, accused of helping the Houthis. Those engaging in terrorist activities against Beshad or similar vessels jeopardize international maritime road security and assume global responsibility for potential future international risks. Tracking data reviewed by NBC News shows the ship some experts believe to be an Iranian spy vessel close by when commercial shipping is targeted in the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden. As America prepared its response last week, NBC News watched the Beshad move away. And this morning, the Houthis issuing another defiant message despite Savannah, those strikes over the weekend, insisting Yemen has the capability to defend itself and, they say, inflict severe blows on the enemy. Simply, Savannah, nothing has happened through this weekend that is de-escalating things in this region. And moving to the northern border, escalating fire on Sunday as Hezbollah fired missiles into Israel and Israel retaliating, striking southern Lebanon. The IDF bolstering its presence on the border as three IDF divisions are now deployed, ready for war with Hezbollah in Lebanon. This is amid a warning from Defense Minister Gallant that a potential pause in Gaza fighting will not apply to the north. Defense Minister Gallant warned Hezbollah that a potential pause in Gaza fighting will not apply to the north. Gallant said the IDF will keep operating against the Lebanese terror group until security is restored for northern residents. The Army said that three IDF troop divisions have been deployed to the northern border in a strident warning to Hezbollah that Israel is ready for war. The IDF summed up efforts to reshape the security reality on the northern border to allow some 80,000 Israelis displaced by months of incessant attacks to return home. Since fighting on the northern border began soon after the October 7th attack on southern Israel, the IDF has targeted more than 3,400 Hezbollah sites and struck more than 150 cells, killing some 200 operatives, mostly members of Hezbollah. The IDF also confirmed strikes in Syria. Meanwhile, the Houthis were back in action over the weekend, firing a ballistic missile targeting a lot. The Arrow Air Defense went into action, downing the missile over the Red Sea outside Israeli airspace. The Houthis have fired several ballistic missiles and drones at Eilat in solidarity with the Gaza Strip, where Israel is battling Hamas. All of the projectiles have been intercepted or missed their target. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17:1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night, Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Elam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.